Settling into a new boat takes time, but luckily time is something we do have, and it's the currency we value the most. What are you doing out there? Our journey over the past nine years, navigating through life on two different boats, has seasoned us for this moment. Meet our third love. She's a 60-foot carbon trimaran, which my partner Riley insisted we spend all of our money on after he felt the need for speed. We compromised on this family-friendly cruising vessel, and we couldn't be happier with our decision on that so far. But we still, of course, had a few kinks to iron out and some training to do. So join us as we take things up a level to really make sure everyone on board knows what they're doing when chaos ensues. Because let me tell you, my friends, it ensues. We've just taken the kids to the beach this morning for an hour before we get started with training day. and We head out to the deep sea. If you guys have missed a couple of episodes, we're in Malaysia right now. We've been island hopping with the kids and forest. And it's been so relaxing. No, it's been stressful. Oh yeah, it's been freaking stressful. What am I talking about? I'm just relaxed because I'm at the beach this morning. It's been pretty stressful. We've got no engine, we've, we've got, got no, no food, we've got no pets. heads are falling off. We had to take out the diesel engine because it was completely flooded with salt water. So we're running primarily on electric propulsion. And the cut of our jib. We can't sail up wind very well, so we need to get that sail altered. So Riley referred to us as limping this morning. We're a yeah. sailboat that's currently limping. I feel like the entirety of my sailing career has been various forms of limping. If you're a, a world cruising vessel, you just limp around. It's very rare that you have everything set up like 100%. That's yeah. if you live in, I'll just use Sydney as an example, and you get your boat 100% and ready and then you go on a race. That's for those people. We're just cruising around making do. Yeah, so it's been interesting to see the battery levels and um, We've been getting the solar panels out every day to charge them and the electric system is doing pretty well. But yeah, we haven't been able to go up to the Philippines, which you guys know we really wanted to do because there's still typhoons kicking around. I have to get the gift so it can get stronger and then I cannot get out forever. What you doing, darling? You got mud on your face. Wash your face with the water. Can I put on this thing? <laughs> Keep going, Lenny, you're nearly there. Swimming, swimming practice. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, little man. It's further than it looks, isn't it? Lenny, what happened? I put my goggles on. You want to put your goggles on? <coughs> Alright, take two with the goggles. There we go. He's doing better now. Woohoo! Yes, you please. Can just put down the ladder. Hey Lenny! Nice work! Hey! Well done mate! Hey, and just before we head out to sea today, I wanted to thank today's sponsor which is BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online therapy which Riley and I have been doing and using for two years now. I'm still trying to figure out who Riley's therapist is so I can get the download on everything he's talking about. He better not be talking about me, he probably is. So BetterHelp services are super professional. It's more affordable than in-office therapy, which we really love, and their scheduling flexibility is out of this world. So if you've been meaning to talk to someone, you might want to listen in. It takes putting in the work to stay happy. I'm still annoyed at this fact, but I have come to accept it. I think sailing actually taught me that no one's coming to save you, no one's coming to help you. You have to want to help yourself or your situation before anything's gonna change. So if something's interfering with your happiness or stopping you from achieving your goals, you might wanna take advantage of BetterHelp's offer they're gonna give you today. I'm gonna to talk about that in just a sec. BetterHelp will connect you with a licensed therapist. After you fill out a simple questionnaire, it takes no time at all, and you'll have a therapist matched to you within 48 hours in most cases. They have over 30,000 therapists in their network, so if you're not vibing with someone to begin with, you can easily switch and that's for free. You can have your therapy sessions as a video call, just a normal phone call, you can chat, whatever's gonna make you feel the most comfortable. If you've been meaning to do something great for yourself, you can head to betterhelp.com forward slash sailing. I'll pop that link in the description box below as well. And you can get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. And that's with a licensed professional specific to your needs. So yeah, don't wait any longer to talk to someone. It's really not as scary as you think. Okay, thanks guys. Never you want. I'm 
I'm getting picked on today. I don't really know what I'm in for, but I just agreed <laughs> that this would be okay. And I'm rolling with it. I don't know why. Where's the bag of stuff? Just here. So we've got flour. So this could be um, mixed up so it melts properly in a pot. You oh, planned to burn her. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Medieval game of thrones. Go medieval on it. Oil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, just gonna get soaked. Just like, gonna put that in the hair. Oats. Uh, and then there's eggs in the um, in the bottom of the fridge as well. Yeah. Uh, and cornflakes. There's no such thing as uh, popcorn over here. So okay. cornflakes, I thought, could kind of be like the tar and feather effect. There's a scene in a movie. I think it's Naked Gun 22 and a half. Frank Trevin and some other dude are trying to get away, and all this stuff falls on them. Anyway, I've taken inspiration from that movie and we are going to plaster Elena with all sorts of stuff. She's vaguely in on this, but she's still going to get super pissed off. Before we pull up anchor this morning, we're going around the boat and untying all the knots that Lenny has tied. He's become obsessed with tying knots recently and so everything is tied up and we need to make sure all the lines are free for when we hoist the mainsail. We don't want someone to get stuck. This is a game we can't win. Why? Because of entropy, Lenny. Uh. Things will tend towards disorder to a degree where a five-year-old can beat two adults. So these are the three reefing lines to stick the hooks in at the back. And these three reefing lines unhooks them once you want to shake out a reef. The mission for the day and the entire reason that we are moving the boat was to train. Okay, that looks great. The idea was to mimic conditions that you might find offshore. Foul weather, rain coming in sideways, lightning, you know the drill by now. I'd hatched a plan to recreate the stress that occurs offshore whilst trying to reduce sail or take a reef. It's got a lot of mud on it. Don't want to go in the water. You're just going to tie it here. Well, I'm just making a bit like straight. Okay, all right, there you go. Now you tie it up on the net. So take it this way a bit, take it to the right. To the right. Spin it this way. A little bit more. That's it. Very good. And sail out here. We're sailing with about two thirds of a main because uh, we just hoisted on anchor. We're trying not to use any of our electric engine because we don't have too much power at the moment. So we're just sailing straight over here. Then we'll throw in a tack, which will mean that the mainsail goes on the other side of the topping lift. Then we can hoist the rest of the mainsail. Then we'll drop out the headsail. Then we can be sailing. Playing my now favorite game of motor at one knot and don't use any energy, we departed our anchorage and needed to sail out to where we had room to maneuver. Seven point five knots in seven point five knots at fifty six degrees true, so we're crunching up wind. <laughs> That's all right. Your mum's pretty good at that as well sometimes. I'm famous for throwing through fruit and it's never made. I'm scared of sleeping outside one night because I feel like I'll cop a banana skin to the face. It. I hit uh, Riley in the head once with a banana skin. You want another go? Doing nine knots now upwind. Uh, we've got the full main and the full jib out. Elena's going to turn up into the wind and we're going to use the reef hooks to take first reef. I'm going to be dicking around at the mast and Elena's going to be at the helm. Right, I'm coming up into the wind. Red loose. I'm going to pop the three. You need to um, have the traveller far over and the main sheet off. Feels like you're tacking. Tacking, come back. Okay, can you see the blue one? Yes, we got it, we got it. Got it. Now, this is the just ridiculous thing is I gotta run, rerun this each time. Okay, so you need to loosen the main sheet and come up higher. Yep. The best 
while ago in the whole of Malaysia. And I can't tell you how nice this is. I think it's the only Saudo in all of Malaysia. But it was... It's like so doughy or something. I don't know, but... Oh, orgasmic. Having a little snack stop. <laughs> You want some more? <laughs> it's not big enough. It's not big enough. That was a pretty big cup. I guess you're a growing two and a half year old, aren't you, mister? I'm big. You are big. Look, I'm going to have this. How's he doing? Baby down. More time for training. So we just did a practice run and what I learnt was, so on our Ultramer, our previous catamaran, I used to be at the helm and I would use my hip to keep the helm pointing into the wind because we couldn't stick it on autopilot to take a reef because we didn't have enough speed and it would just fall off. So I was always helming and managing the lines here, but on this boat, the helm is so big and managing the lines is just that little bit larger, I guess, and therefore harder. So I couldn't keep my hip on the helm and keep us pointing into the wind. But what we discovered was I could go 20 degrees to the wind and we could still be sailing and I could take a reef. So we just learnt that then, which is going to make my life so much easier not having to try and helm into the wind and manage the lines. Um, Let's go! Take a reef! Take a reef! Squall coming! Squall coming! I said not to roar my I oh, know! <laughs> that was my one roar! No! Come on, let's go! Take a reef! Take a <laughs> reef! Take a reef! Squall coming! <laughs> Were you going to wear your bikinis? No, just, just not my only bit of sun protective gear that I own. Ability to perform maneuvers under pressure, 7 out of 10. Ability to give clear instructions to fellow teammates whilst exposed to extrinsic stressors, 8 out of 10. Ability to avoid general safety hazards on board like flower in the eyes and flying eggs, 0 out of 10. General comments. Every sailor knows that at some point there is going to be flour being poured from a bag upwind whilst on a beam reach in Malaysia. Elena's inability to avoid the aforementioned safety hazard means that she will be required to repeat the exam another time. They should invent a Nutella smelling perfume because I smell delicious. I would wear this. I've just been smelling myself the whole time. Overpowering the egg, which I would vomit over if I could actually smell. There was nothing to our madness. Oh my god, it's caked on. Oh yuck, it's never coming out. Ow. Okay, about today. How is today? Are you harboring any latent animosity about the cracking of the egg on the head? 
maybe the third Even egg. Not the first or the second egg, but the third egg. I was like, you is agreed this necessary? To it? <laughs> Signed it off in triplicate. I did. I just Didn't there was a lot stamp, of layers. Right? There was flour. There was egg. There was oats, which is so absorbent. That, Richard Dawkins that was... once said that the shooting of the messenger is one of humanity's greatest foibles. No, today was really fun doing the drills and stuff. I was saying to Riley the other day, it the feels really good. The boat is fun. Yeah, the boat is so fun. I was saying to Riley the other day, it feels really nice that we have a handle on it. And like, I would be so confident just going from one country to another with Riley. And we also love how responsive the boat is. I was saying today as well that it feels a bit like a, a toy. Like it's so fun. As soon as you've got the mainsail up, it just goes like it, and it's yours. You're in control. Whereas on a catamaran, I feel, especially off anchor, on a catamaran, you tend to meander before you pick up speed and then you're off sailing and in control. Mm. Whereas with this, you're, you by the time the sail is two thirds of the way up, you're like sailing and you've got control. So you can luff up into the wind, tack, but this is all before you've got the anchor up. And then you get the anchor up and bear away and all of a sudden you're doing six knots. You feel like you're totally in control of the boat. Yeah, and you can see everything from up here. 360 degree views of the sea. So we've got potatoes, beans and tuna. That's pretty much all the <laughs> canned stuff that we've got left. <laughs> Rations are getting low. And an avocado salad. Forrest bought like how many avocados? Because they were super uh, cheap. At least 12. 12 <laughs> avocados and they've all decided to go right Today. It's the before bed energy burst where they're just crazy. <laughs> So yesterday was a huge success. The more of these training days we do, the more competent we'll become. Actually, before we left the marina on this voyage north around Malaysia, we actually spent a couple of days just messing around off the coast, practicing again. One thing I've been really surprised by was how easy it is to hoist the mainsail. Riley does it by himself and the rest of us crew barely notice it's happened. I guess I just thought it'd be much more difficult on such a big boat, so I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, we were going to give the training a rest for now and take some time to really enjoy the nature we were surrounded by. We just got back from the beach. We did a Vagabella swim photo shoot and it was so beautiful, the beach was, couldn't have been better. I'm just so in love with this collection, all the colours, it all fits perfectly. I'll put the link in the description box below. Go check out the new collection and maybe grab a piece, that would be amazing. Forrest is just teaching Riley how to foil. Maybe at this speed, get to your knees. <coughs> Him and I have only done like the electric foiling with Kara and Nate. You might have seen that episode. But we're going to learn how to manually foil, I guess, with the wing. So step one is to learn how to just get used to the foil off the back of the dinghy. And then we'll add the wing later. So I'm just cooking toast for the kids while he goes first and then I'm up next. And let's see how kooky we are. Let's see if Forrest can stand up, Lenny. So go Forrest! Elena just got up on foil for the first time and I didn't film it. I feel so bad, but pressure's on. You're about to do it again now. I reckon you will.
the board or you want me to hold you? I Okay, swim to the board. He said he wants to try to stand up. Bend your knees, bend your knees. <laughs> Lenny, shut the fridge, please. You're letting all the cold air out. Ready? Come on. So many of you might know that we planned for the dinghy to go on the stern of the boat, but basically we ran out of time and money to install a, like a strong davit arm off the boom. So it's kind of impossible now for us to lift it off the back. It's gonna have to stay here on the net until we get some work done in the marina somewhere down the line. Down? Yep. Beautiful. Hell yeah. That was smooth. What did you build, Darwin? A tower! Well done! I thought exercise. Oh yeah! Two! <laughs> Three! It's yes! It's so cute! Yeah! You've never heard that? Yeah, come yeah. on! Alrighty, where are we going? We're going to the outside. Oh wow! <laughs> what's, what's funny? He just, he's trying to talk and he just burps. Oh. He goes, why are you saying it's a nut? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing up there? He's letting go for a bit, he's pretty strong. Koala! <laughs> there we go. Hold on. <laughs> Push-ups now as well. Yeah. Darwin, that is really, really good, mate. That's good, my deal. Well done. Hey. Hey. What you doing? It's really uncomfortable in this anchorage, so we're moving over to the other side. Waves are coming in from here, so we're going to go and hide up in the corner over there. That looks amazing, hey? Looks beautiful. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where's Darwin? Has anyone seen him? Have you seen Darwin? Come find him, he's hiding. <gasps> Is he in there? Yes. Can you shut the lid for me, please? Good boy. Another day in paradise. Before you go, please like the video, seeing as I had to get eggs cracked on my head for it, and leave us a comment. We do love to hear from you. Next week, you'll be snooping on our daily routine. We're going to show you what the Vagabond family gets up to from dawn till dusk. We'll see you all soon.